In this video, we're talking about severe weather in the Great Lakes region. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced risk for severe weather with a 30% chance of damaging winds. Then we're going to take a look at the medium range forecast and see where the next threat is coming from. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Like you just saw in the intro there, the Storm Prediction Center has put out an enhanced risk for severe weather in Wisconsin. And actually I made the last minute decision that I'm going to go, I'm going to go chase that. Probably not the, the smartest uh, decision. You know, it's a pretty far drive for me, but I actually have another uh, business opportunity in uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, so I figured why not go a day early, head up to Wisconsin, Minnesota, maybe get some content for the YouTube channel, uh, and then hit that meeting on the way back. So as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to be hopping in the storm sneaker and going all the way up to close to Canada, son. Of course, I will be live streaming. I'll be live tweeting. I'll be posting videos and all that stuff. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that uh, so you can see all my updates dates while I'm out there, okay? And for now, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America, and we're starting off once again with the infrared satellite. I like starting off with this. Like I said yesterday, it, it gives you a good idea of how things are going, how things are flowing, and you know, just what the whole weather picture looks like. As you can see, the biggest story right now uh, was the severe weather that we had last night in Wisconsin and uh, parts of Michigan. We talked about that yesterday. We had all kinds of severe thunderstorm warnings and a couple tornado warnings, and that was just the first First little taste uh, of our parade of storms up here that we're going to be having over the next couple days okay this is the lead of the parade today it's going to be visiting portions of the northeast okay we're going to have some severe weather over here possibly in new york and also we might have a second addition to the parade down here in uh, southern minnesota today with some more severe weather and then the next part of the parade comes in tomorrow which hopefully i'll be there i'll be in attendance uh, and that's going to bring some more severe weather to wisconsin and then you know i wouldn't be surprised to see even more after that and of course it'll also push off to the south, possibly bringing some uh, severe weather to the Ohio Valley region too. So lots of action going on up here on the underside of that zonal flow on that big ridge that I was talking about. We've got a trough right next to a ridge and in between there, we're going to see just, you know, storm after storm. So that's what we're looking at. All right. So there is a slight risk of severe weather today in the northeastern portion of the United States. This includes Rochester and Buffalo. Okay. And that's going to be in association with, you know, our leftover storm system that we just saw go through uh, Michigan and and, uh, Wisconsin yesterday. So let's take a look at that. We're going to see some storms pop up off the lakes here, right as this system goes across the border of Canada into the United States. We're going to see this really ramp up around 2 p.m. And then around 3 or 4 p.m., we could see a mesoscale convective system of storms moving through western New York into upstate New York, heading towards Albany now. And here we are around 5 p.m. This looks to me like it's probably going to be a multicellular or a linear storm system in nature. And really the main threats here are going to be some isolated hail and damaging winds. Okay, this is is only a slight risk of severe weather and it's the slightest of slight. I would not be too concerned about this storm system as it comes through. Once again, the main threats here is possibly as it moves through, uh, you know, uh, Syracuse or maybe even as it gets all the way into Albany, some small hail, very heavy rain and some damaging winds. And of course, these storms are also going to continue to affect uh, other other regions of New England, including Massachusetts, uh, maybe all the way into Boston by 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, but once again, just general thunderstorm risks here as we go forward. And let's go ahead and take a look at tomorrow too and as you can see we've got the the tail end of that boundary is going to try to spark off uh, some more storms around 4 p.m tomorrow in pennsylvania jersey all the way down into the chesapeake bay in the delmarva peninsula and these storms could get a little strong too look at here at 6 p.m down near philadelphia and baltimore we could be seeing some uh, you know decent sized hailstones uh, and definitely some downburst winds uh, with some of those big updrafts that come with these kinds of storms and now oh, wow that actually congeals into a, a multicellular or linear line of storms around 11 p.m. on Wednesday night uh, that could cause some wind damage here on the southern tip of Maryland all the way down through you know possibly heading towards Virginia Beach area there and uh, that looks pretty interesting as well but as of right now we're mainly focused on this area for the possibility for some severe weather today uh, make sure you are weather aware okay download you a nice radar app and just keep an eye on the storms okay if anything crazy happens i'll let you know on twitter but as of right now i think this is just a pretty general uh, slight risk of severe weather all right so tracking these storms up here in the north central part of the united states and in the great lakes region is going to be hard with the map views that i have i don't have a specific map that can zoom in just on this area so to see both minnesota 
Minnesota and Wisconsin uh, in its in all their glory. I have to use this view, and we'll have to just peek up here and look at them, and then we'll zoom in, okay? Uh, so we do have that slight risk of severe weather today. We're going to have some storms moving through this morning. That's what we're seeing on our satellite right now. Uh, on, the, on the tail end of that boundary, once again, we're going to have some more storms pop up around 9 p.m. tonight, and some of those could be severe. And then something really interesting happens. We get a little bit of an MCS or a mesoscale convective system trying to rush through uh, in the early morning hours on Wednesday, okay? So 10 a.m., 11 a.m., uh, 12 p.m. That, that's kind of weird, you know? <laughs> It dies out during the heating of the day, but hey, li listen, that is something that we see up here in the north sometimes during this time of the year, and you know, just watch out if you're in Minneapolis on your way to work in the morning, all of a sudden a big storm comes out of nowhere. Uh, that is going to be a very real possibility here with maybe some severe weather uh, coming out of that little thing right there. And then of course, as we push this forward, what I'm going up there for, it becomes visible right around 4 or 5 p.m. on Wednesday, okay? And this right here is what's sparking that enhanced risk of severe weather that we're going to talk about in more detail right now. So first of all, here's a closer look at that uh, MCS that comes through Minneapolis around 10 a.m. Once again, the, you know, it's stuff like this that's really hard to tell if the HRRR is being serious or not. You know, this right here could not happen at all, uh, it, or it could be even more intense than what the HRRR is showing right now. So we'll have to keep a real close eye on that uh, because uh, this, it's little stuff like this can that can cause a lot of problems because, you know, people aren't going to be talking about it. There's not going to be a lot of lead time because people aren't going to be expecting it. And, you know, there could definitely be some ice isolated wind damage with a really strong uh, convective system like that blowing through. And then we finally see the big storms coming through around 4 or 5 p.m. Remember, these times over here are going to be uh, in Eastern time, so this is all going to be about an hour behind what I'm saying. But, you know, 4 or 5 p.m., we're going to see some big storms popping up here in northern Minnesota. Unfortunately, I won't I probably won't be able to make it that far north in time to intercept these storms. Uh, this is probably going to be the time where they're most uh, photogenic, though. They'll probably be supercellular in nature. Uh, they'll probably be a little elevated at this point and probably just be big hail producers. Uh, but there is definitely the chance for some tornadoes to happen up here in northern Minnesota. And what's going to happen is they're going to quickly turn into a multicellular uh, type storm system and then eventually a linear event. And that's where I'll be uh, intercepting them. So by 7 p.m tomorrow I will probably be somewhere in this area right here waiting for these storms and you know there, there's a very good chance that at this point some more supercell storms start popping up off this little boundary right here or maybe they just start popping off in this environment down here that's really untouched uh, underneath the warm front that's what I'm hoping for if I want to get some storms <laughs> on camera uh, but otherwise I'm just gonna be waiting for this big cluster of storms to come down uh, to my area and then at this point I'll be mainly looking for a sunset shelf cloud or maybe some nice lightning time lapses or something like that, okay? And I'm going to be trying to stay south of the storms. Uh, that way I don't have to drive in any rain or anything. But, uh, you know, at this point, 10 p.m., sun's going to be setting out here. It's 9 p.m. Uh, central, so it'll be right around the time for the sun to be setting, uh, and then we'll be able to see all the glorious lightning as it goes off to our east, and we are going to be, you know, trying to head back uh, south at this point. But, you know, if you live up here in the path, anywhere between Tomahawk and Eagle River up here in northern Wisconsin, uh, the, once again, the main threats are going to be damaging wind and hail, but there actually is a decent tornado threat out here, okay? The only thing that we've got going against us as far as tornadoes go, and that's a good thing if you live out here, is, uh, you know, these storms are linear. A lot of times it takes supercell thunderstorms in this kind of environment to produce tornadoes, but what we have are just a bunch of lines of, uh, you know, multicellular globs of storms. The timing's going to be like this. The storms enter Wisconsin around 8 or 9 p.m. They're probably going to be at their strongest right around 10 or 11 p.m., and then right sunset happens, we're going to see these storms really start to approach Milwaukee. Um, and at this point, I think definitely the tornado threat's going to be really low and the main threat's going to be straight line damaging winds here. And these storms could definitely pack a punch. We got a lot of, you know, ingredients out there that are, that are mixing together to really cause some bad storms out in this area. So watch out if you're in Milwaukee, anywhere in northern or eastern uh, Wisconsin. And we also might see some flash flooding situations here uh, on the backside, you know, once again from Milwaukee points north and west as we get another round of storms that's going to go over the same area right after that big line of storms comes through. And then it'll all start weakening once it gets across Lake Michigan there. So let's take a look at the three kilometer NAM model because it's been just going crazy with the uh, the ingredients behind the storm system. And let's take a look at why uh, this situation could become really interesting as we go forward. Uh, look at all that cape we're going to have today. It's just building up. And then tomorrow, it's just an absolute powder keg out there uh, with values, you know, over 5,000 joules 
joules per kilogram of cape right there where the convection is going to start happening. Uh, in this kind of situation, you definitely get storms. You definitely get big, bad storms. Uh, but, you know, with this much cape feeding into the storms, um, it's very possible that we see, you know, this stuff become linear really fast because the more storms you get, the faster they congeal together and the faster they, you know, just race off and, and try to eat more of that cape up. That's bad news if you don't want to experience those straight line damaging winds, but that's good news if you don't want to experience tornadoes, okay? And as you can see, you can see those storms eating up all that convective energy as they race off to the south. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes into uh, creating an environment that's favorable for tornadoes, okay? You got to worry about that lower level jet stream uh, you got to worry about uh, wind shear in all layers of the atmosphere. Um, if we were looking at a skew T plot, you'd have to worry about how that hodograph curved. Dew points, humidity gradients, lower convection levels. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into uh, the ingredients that come together and make a tornado. And thankfully, we have a, a model here that shows us where uh, all these ingredients come together uh, in, in the best way. So looky here, this is the significant tornado parameter as these storms come across Wisconsin. And we're seeing, you know, 16 out of 10, 15 out of 10 all across Wisconsin as this comes through okay now what this tells me is that we have a very a very favorable environment uh, for the production of tornadoes out here in Wisconsin uh, and Minnesota during this storm system but once again it doesn't matter if we just have big lines of storms coming through if we just have a big uh, mesoscale convective system coming through uh, because you know yes it's possible we get one or two tornadoes spinning up inside of that line of storms uh, in order for you know this to really be actualized we need renegade supercell thunderstorms to take advantage of these values all by themselves. And, and you know, if that doesn't happen, we're not going to see a widespread tornado outbreak and we're likely not going to see any big long track tornadoes. So um, if you do, you know, once again, you know, if you live in this area, be weather aware, download your radar app. If you see a storm all by itself pop up out ahead of the big line that's coming towards you, watch that storm closely because any supercell that pops up in this environment is definitely going to be able uh, to root up, enter the phase of cyclonic rotation and then start tornado genesis as it moves off to the uh, it'll probably move east in that environment until it catches up with the line that eventually shoves it south so yeah long story short big storms are coming to minnesota and wisconsin uh, how big are they going to be and is there going to be tornadoes and all this stuff we don't know yet but what you know <laughs> and what i know is that why not just be prepared for the worst okay go ahead and make sure you have some way or two ways of getting warnings because once again this is going to be late in the afternoon possibly after dark when a lot of this is happening you might want to go to sleep and that's totally okay uh, but make sure you got something that could wake you up if there's a tornado warning issued for your area and then make sure you have a plan in place for when you do get woken up you know exactly what you're going to do you know exactly where everything is and what's happening and you go to your safe spot and you just take shelter until it's over and uh, you, you'll be fine you'll be fine all right real quick let's take a look at the whole United States and uh, talk about the pattern that we're going to be entering over the next little bit once again okay this is a ridge this is a trough in the middle where they get really close here uh, we are watching for the possibility of multiple rounds of storms okay this is our parade of storms that's going to be coming through they're going to come in waves like this uh, as long as this pattern is set up like this okay now how long do we get to keep that pattern let's keep pushing this forward and it actually intensifies a little bit here as we go into Wednesday all the way into Thursday and Friday okay so we're still going to be watching this area for the potential for more storms to form up and go like this down the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Appalachian region. And it really intensifies here as this ridge is just absolutely going crazy up here in British Columbia and Alberta. And also this trough is really deepening down here uh, towards Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Uh, and once again, we have to watch uh, this boundary area for more storms, okay? So we're talking all the way into Friday and Saturday here. We're going to be watching for the possibility of more storms to form down this boundary. And uh, any one of them could be severe in nature. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting and different from what we talked about yesterday this ridge is still going crazy up here and this trough is creating like a pinwheel effect okay there's a central area of circulation and we have multiple lobes of lower areas of pressure that are going around it okay and uh, this lobe right here is going to try to penetrate down into the Great Lakes and then possibly even into the Ohio Valley and what that's going to do is it's really going to change our weather pattern okay this is absolutely going to put an end to the non-stop uh, severe weather that we're seeing up here in the Great Lakes in the Northeast it's going to give 
give us probably some cooler temperatures. Um, and honestly, it's, it's, it's probably going to mean uh, some pretty quiet weather, um, except for maybe down here in the deep south into Florida, uh, as uh, some of these storm systems can try to uh, climb up the southeastern side of these troughs and uh, uh, bring a little bit of rain down there. But uh, this right here is a pretty quiet looking weather pattern uh, for the majority of the United States as we get into next week. As you can see, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, you know, still all the way into Thursday and Friday of next week, uh, we could be talking about a pretty quiet weather pattern for most of the eastern half of the United States. Now, unfortunately, uh, there's not a big flip over here on the west. We still got a ridge. We, we're still going to have high temperatures and all that stuff. And uh, down here underneath all this blue, uh, we're still going to have a lot of rain to deal with. So uh, let's, you know, we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to keep a very close eye on this as we go forward. And uh, as soon as I get back from uh, Wisconsin, uh, I'll, I'll be back on Friday. Uh, as soon as I get back, we are uh, going to be leaving again and going on vacation to the beach. So uh, I'll be updating you from uh, hopefully I'll try to do this like format of video, like literally on the beach and we'll, we'll update you down there. Okay. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, please, please, please. Uh, follow me on all my other social media so that we can stick together and uh, I can share all my cool videos and my awesome tornado videos that I get while I'm out there. And that's all the weather talk that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I've got a very long drive ahead of me and I am bringing help. Uh, I've got a different person going with me this time. You guys will meet him in the video. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's pretty stressful to have to, you know, uh, prepare for a trip like that last minute, especially with Echo here and all that stuff. But even outside of the storm chasing, there's a very good reason that I'm going down there. So uh, it's something that I have to do. And hopefully we have some fun while we're doing it. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Smash the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications. Goodbye. Ooh.